Welcome to Hybrid Horizons on Freewheeling. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. We've begun our journey into the world of the hybrid car, and now we want to better understand just how these cars are so different from conventional vehicles on our roads. The best place to do that is to try and understand the beginnings of a hybrid vehicle. And so I am at the Suzuki plant, which is Toyota's mother plant for all things hybrid around the world that comes from the Toyota brand. This plant is located in Toyota City in the Aichi prefecture of central Japan. And uh, what's remarkable here is that it's not just the fact that it's a different manufacturing process for these different vehicles. It's also an environmentally friendly one. It's a sustainable plant. And I want to take a look at all of those things that make the plant itself very different from other manufacturing sites across the world. Tsutsumi is considered the main plant for Toyota and has been around since 1970. But in the past few years, it has become one of five Toyota eco factories around the world. The idea was to pioneer clean manufacturing operations coupled with the use of renewable energy sources. Toyota's eco factory ethos is not just about its performance in manufacturing, but also its relationship with local people and the environment. And this idea was kept in mind when the plant was expanded. Employees also joined with local people to plant 50,000 trees around the factory site. And the area therefore looks less like a plant and more like a mini forest. In 2007, when the guys in R&D were busy working on the third generation of the Prius, which of course came to the market only in 2009, there was a bit of a change that was also taking place in the plant that produces this car. The big change was to try and make the plant itself a little bit more eco-friendly, in line with the uh, overall motto, the overall theme that the Tsutsumi plant was trying to undertake. So the actual walls that you see here of all the blocks, all the buildings, whether it's the manufacturing or the administrative blocks, are all painted a certain shade of green. And while the color may be apt, the idea is that it's a special paint that was developed by a professor at the University of Tokyo, a paint that uh, reacts with the environment to try and actually improve it. Photocatalytic paint is what they call it. And uh, it reacts with ultraviolet rays, which come through in natural light and help release oxygen into the atmosphere. Sounds pretty fascinating. The idea is to emulate the same sort of a biological process that uh, is carried out by poplar trees as well. 40,000 square meters of wall are now covered with this paint, and uh, that's equivalent of the effect of 4,000 poplar trees. The other remarkable quality of this paint finish, it stays absolutely clean. It doesn't need any maintenance. This plant makes the world famous Prius. The manufacturing process at Tsutsumi sends no waste to a landfill. And since 1999, even the waste being incinerated has been cut by 82% to 730 tons. The long-term aim is to cut this figure down to zero. Between 2003 and 2007, carbon dioxide emissions were reduced by 36% and the total amount of waste produced fell by 21%. Water usage has also fallen by 14%. Solar power is therefore one of Tsutsumi's big features, with 50,000 square meters of panels generating up to 2,000 kilowatts of energy an hour. Many sections of the plant, even some of the administrative blocks, are covered with grass, and uh, that's to sort of blend in with the ecology here. But more crucially, Pretty much every structure here has solar paneling on it. Solar power, in fact, uh, here at the Tsutsumi plant, accounts for about 5% of the plant's overall electricity requirement. It doesn't sound like a whole lot to you, but that's about 2,000 kilowatts, which is enough electricity to power 500 households. But when you think of solar power, the Tsutsumi plant does not simply use the sun to produce electricity. It also makes use of the sun's natural light in a very unique way. It really is stepping from the dark into the light, both figuratively and literally. What you see here is something quite remarkable. In fact, the feeling I have right now standing here with all this light showering down on me is uh, pretty much how we feel inside our uh, television studios. That's how bright this light is, and this is a cloudy day. 
What they've managed to do here is to essentially harness the light uh, from the sun and bring it indoors. It's an expensive process, which is why you're seeing this only in the visitor center, only in some of the administrative blocks right now. But eventually, the plan is to try and take this to different parts of uh, even the manufacturing unit to try and reduce the dependence on uh, unnatural light. Using reflective plates, the light is focused on the areas needed, but as I mentioned, this is very expensive, and so it's a gradual adopting of this new technique that I could see around this plant. The plant itself makes 480,000 cars a year and is the manufacturing base of the Prius, the Prius Alpha, called the Prius V in the US, the Prius PHV, or plug-in hybrid vehicle, besides the hybrid and regular Camry, and other models like the Premio and Allion. Now this one is Line Mi, as they say in Japanese, which is Line 2. There are two lines here. And uh, both of them can produce up to 937 cars a day. Quite a lot, but uh, that is pretty flexible in terms of the kind of demand the market throws up. Speaking of flexibility, we've told you that this particular line can accommodate both hybrid and conventional models at the same time. But given the global demand for hybrid cars, it's pretty much tipped towards the hybrids and so uh, on line two you have 92 percent of the cars that are getting produced which are hybrids on line one it's 85 percent Sales for the hybrid range for Toyota are growing at a faster rate than for conventional car models. And so it's only natural that the company has invested large amounts of money and R&D resources to develop the manufacturing process further. And of course, R&D spent also went to improving the hybrid model. For first to second, we, add, we added the uh, so-called uh, voltage converter system uh, first generation Prius uh, battery uh, electric voltage and uh, motor uh, driven voltage is the same so called uh, 200 or 300 V and uh, for second generation Prius we add uh, we added the uh, uh, voltage boost converter system so but even if the battery uh, voltage is uh, 200 V, uh, motor control uh, voltage is uh, uh, 600 or 700 volt V. And that is a uh, very good effect on the uh, fuel efficiency. And second generation to third generation, we greatly improved the gasoline engine for hybrid system. Uh, we newly uh, developed the uh, EGR system for hybrid, special EGR system for hybrid, and the uh, all uh, engine uh, additional e component is uh, driven only by motor. No mechanical belt is, uh, uh, there's no mechanical vo uh, belt on uh, third generation current generation Prius. And uh, that means uh, zero friction from the belt inside. Uh, of course, there are much more <laughs> improvements exist. That, that is one of the examples. The flexible line here at Sutsumi implies that many of the processes involved in manufacturing both kinds of cars are similar. But this is one area where it does get different. Surprisingly small and compact, isn't it? The lithium-ion battery is what really forms the heart of every hybrid vehicle. And uh, what you're seeing here is just the initial stage of assembly. The batteries come in from the supplier, they're connected to the charger, and then they move on into uh, the rest of the manufacturing process. Now, they are compact, surprisingly perhaps for some of you, but take a look at the one that's back there, the bigger one. It looks a little incongruous compared to the rest. The reason for that looking different, well, that's because that's the battery pack that uh, goes into the plug-in hybrid vehicles. 
The plug-in hybrid is the newer, more contemporary system, but one that needs the end user to have the option of plugging the car into a power outlet at home or work, or both. This allows for higher capacity of battery power and therefore longer distances on electric mode. But more on the car later, back to the manufacturing process. The battery pack for the plug-in hybrid is about uh, 90 kgs in weight. The smaller one back there is the one that goes into the Prius and uh, that weighs about 60 odd kgs. So that's the weight difference between the two. The process, quite a special one here because that's where you can actually see the battery pack traveling into the car and getting fitted in process somewhat similar to an engine going into a car's shell as well at most conventional car plants which is of course called the marriage considered pretty sacred in most car plants and I have to say that here at this plant this process is also pretty special hybrid technology is relatively new when compared to the internal combustion engine the manufacture of cars using this technology had no previous benchmarks or conventions to fall back on. So it took as much ingenuity as efficiency and effort to get the right ideas working. And this aspect of working backwards on what makes more sense is typical of the Japanese and a culture I have found predominant and prevalent in Toyota in particular. that's the inverter the motor that actually goes into a hybrid car remember there's a gasoline engine and then there's the electrical component this is it and uh, an interesting story that I picked up while I was here the shape and size of this particular unit has been governed by something very practical the engineers here on the line actually sent some feedback to the R&D guys saying that is it possible for you to actually make this a certain shape and a certain size they said sure why not the reason for that it's the same shape and size as a car battery, a conventional car battery, so that on a flexible line like this one, it's the same robotic arm that can actually pick up the car battery to put into a gasoline car and the motor to put into a hybrid. Well, that's smart and just makes sense, doesn't it? Well, now that is the same reason why buyers choose a hybrid car over a conventional one. But while all of this development carries on, car makers around the world are also trying to constantly come up with other solutions which may better what hybrids have achieved. While some focus on fully electric vehicles, others are going a step further with hydrogen fuel cell technology. European companies, meanwhile, are focusing on lightweight, clean diesel engines. And it's crucial how these messages reach buyers. In 2012, Toyota entered the very prestigious 24-hour race at Le Mans in France, and that too in the LMP1 category, which is the top rung of competition. Le Mans is the pinnacle of motorsport. Coming to the 24 hours at Le Mans as a car maker means that you have the stuff to take on champions. The 24-hour race is the ultimate test of endurance for man and machine. It is also the testing ground through which new technologies germinate for our regular road-going cars. And with hybrids in particular, endurance is a big talking point, since at Le Mans, only the best engine and chassis can survive racing continuously for a grueling 24 hours. Toyota and Audi both had two hybrid cars each in the race, for the first time. It was a historic change to the Le Mans tradition since in both cases the cars could also use regenerative energy stored on board to provide an extra boost of power. Pretty much like the kinetic energy recuperation system occurs in Formula One. The challenge from Toyota saw the team being the only real rival to champions Audi and for 2013 the team is back with the same hybrid system developed for the new TS-030 car by the Toyota Motorsport division. The super capacitor based hybrid system delivers 300 brake horsepower of boost automatically. Besides the 530 bhp already generated by the 3.4 litre V8 petrol engine. There will be completely new development on the 2014 car due to regulation changes in the sport. I personally I think the uh, a 
attractiveness of the automobile is so-called the driving and driving pleasure. And uh, that driving pleasure includes, of course, uh, drive environmentally or drive fast or uh, having a competition in the racing track. Uh, but basically, the uh, automobile's uh, emotional feel, emotional field is very uh, essential and important. And at the same time, uh, environment is additional fundamental. So adding these kind of things in the race field is a very good, mes good message. The data derived from participation in races like Le Mans helps engineers to develop stronger and more convenient technologies for road cars, which help buyers in the long run. And it all comes right back here to the plant, where these new technological innovations are incorporated into the cars that are made here. We will share the experience of owning such a car and also drive the many different hybrid models, but that's ahead on this series. Very often here on Freewheeling, we bring you up close to things that uh, ordinarily people can't access. And so sometimes things are a bit exclusive to all of you who are watching. It's no different this time around because uh, what I wanted to share with you today is that uh, coming inside here to the Susumi plant and uh, actually filming the process of hybrid cars being put together, it's a bit of a world first. That's right. It's not just an Indian television crew that's coming in here for the first time. It's the first time anyone's really been allowed access into this realm of Toyota, which is pretty sacred to the company's future and its success the world over. So, mull on that thought, and uh, I will, of course, see you on the program next week. There's plenty more still to look forward to. I'll leave you with a glimpse of what's coming up on the program next week. In fact, until then, keep free